What's poppin' everybody? Welcome to the brand new and improved Tom and Joey Entertainment, aka TJENT. This is episode number one of Real Talk. Talk. Number one. One's up. Longhorns. Longhorns. But that would be two. So like Longhorns two. divided by two. I guess. Yeah. I mean if you wanna if you want to get technical about it, nerd, yeah. then yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. This is episode number one of Real Talk with Tom and Joey, our new show. And speaking of, Tom, how you doing? What's what's popping? What's popping? That's that's usually how you throw it at me. Yeah. Well, I used to, yeah. Well, I used to say what's happening. That's fair. What's not what's popping? What's popping's in real life. Yeah. But yeah. Other well, than what's popping is how I greet the show. Ah, yeah, that's ah, it. There that's we go. It. There we is. go. That was an ordeal. Well, what's happening? You know, same old. Yeah. Just living the dream. Yep. Out here in Northern Michigan, we got the National Cherry Festival going on right now. It's mm. pretty. It's awesome for the city. And it's like, this is the big debate that we is get in all though? the time. Is it, it worth it? Because I hear that businesses like only survive because yeah, of charity. Yeah, there's festival, definitely certain ones. But the amount of anger I have for tourists in my town, I don't know if that really copes. Like, it, I don't think that suffices. Like, It, it helps. For those of you who don't know, we're about an hour outside of downtown where the Cherry Festival now is we, yes but we grew up oh yeah we grew like up right, right in the, the heart of it. it yeah you especially yeah um because yeah. i lived a little bit farther away than downtown but you yeah. were right there i was right in the heat yeah yeah i've had my i've had my fair share of shouting spells with fudgies as we fudgies. call them yes. fudgies is the classic yes. if you're if you're from anywhere other than northern michigan someone calls you a fudgy i'm telling you right now it is not a compliment yeah no it is not it, something that you want never, to be called no Preferably not in your entire life. Exactly. And as you can see, we are no longer cutting out individual spaces like we used to. So nope. it's no longer going to be like, boom, pop, boom, boom, pop, right in your face. All it's over the a, map. Just a casual conversation with us. Tweaky maybe. Gents. Yeah. Some, sometimes we're going to get a third. We're yep. going to try our best. Yeah. But as of right now, you're going to get used to our handsome faces because yep. this is we're going to be usual. us. Yeah. New landscape. Yes. Appreciate the hip hop heads. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you know any of these records and if you know what they are, hit then... Hit us up and come hang out with us. Yeah, because, because that's awesome. Yeah. We'll get you know along any, great. Yeah. You know any of these records, you're yeah. going to be great friends with us. Yeah, that is that pretty is much a 100% fact. Yeah. And as you can tell, our new day-to-day episodes... So I'm, we're going to kind of lay it out. And this is kind of our first topic of discussion. It's going to lay out kind of how our channel is going to be in the future, how we're going to release videos every week, all the, how we're, the video is going to work, that sort of thing. So, new Horizons. Yeah, so to kind of give you a grand view, every single week, we are going to be posting a video Monday through Friday at noon Eastern time. Right. So how this is going to work is that we're going to sit down here and record a whole video for maybe about an hour and a half. Yeah. I mean, that's usually our give goal. Take. Yeah, it's if, it's, if it's a little bit less, it's a little bit over, we don't really care. Some topics run over, yeah. whatever. Yeah, each of us is going to bring two topics to the table. And we're going to discuss the topics beforehand, so yeah. it's not like there's surprise topics or anything. We know right. what we're going to talk about, Right. Yeah. but exactly. we ourselves came up with the talk, topic yes. to begin with. Yes. So how we're going to do it is that we're each going to do each topic. We're going to do one big recording se- session, and then Monday through Friday, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're going to get each topic as an individual video. And at then... Noon. Uh-huh. At noon. Yes, at noon Eastern time. At youtube.com slash tjent, Correct. which is our new custom URL, which is badass. Dope. But, so you get an episode every week. Right. Each topic break the whole episode breaking down into segments throughout every week, and then Friday we have a special segment which you're not going to see till Friday. But and then we also, don't know those topics though. Yes, we don't tell each other. Those yes. are a special treat that are just funnier, pretty lighthearted. Sometimes yeah. they might be a little bit dark. Yeah, but yeah. they're they're supposed to shock the other person and get. You're supposed to see our reaction live as you're reacting. Yeah. So we don't tell each other. We have backups in case one of us knows it or someone yeah. uses it. Or we it. do this the same time, yeah, the same yeah. story. Which is yeah. possible. I mm-hmm. doubt it. Yeah. But it's, I mean, that that's the only thing that's a little bit more, less calculated. Yeah. And we'll release that as one video as well because the, those won't necessarily, I mean, they might sometimes, but they don't usually generate a longer conversation like yeah. our normal topics were. It's mostly just like, whoa. Yeah. See our reaction. <laughs> it's, they're either stories like you should know about or... Most we, of the time, probably not. Yeah. It's just like crazy <laughs> shit that yeah. happens. Y- you should hear about this and hear about how this happens. It's, because it's usually going to be pretty hysterical. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So that's how we're going to week weekly schedule is going to work. We're going to release a video every single day. And that gives us the ability to push out more content, which is huge. 
Yes. But let me ask you a question, Joey. What is your question? And this is this is going to help the viewers out. If I want to listen to just the audio, how would that go down? That is a very good question, Tom, because although... Do, do they know? I don't think they know. Do you know? I, I might know. I know. I might know. So let, let me give you a shot and let you see if I do know. It's eventually going to happen. It's our goal. We're going to try it best soon because actually a really good fan of the show, my brother Ian, he already has a podcast that's going to be on iTunes or Pro-scast. that is on iTunes. Procast. Shout out. It's the only Procast on iTunes. Shout out. Truth. But we're going to try to get it on iTunes because it's kind of how the new direction that we're going with our channel and the new video format that we're going to do. Because as you can see, we're not cutting out the individual spaces. It's more of a conversation. Yep. It's more of a discussion. You can tell that we've significantly upgraded not only with our video, but these wonderful, these beautiful mics, wonderful mics that you can just, you can just taste the sound. Yeah. That's, I get aroused by my own voice. I'm not going to lie. I with mean, this new hey, mic, hey, it give, happens. Give us, give us a quick little Game of Thrones action. Oh, he's just a <laughs> bastard. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've been trying out my Game of Thrones accent. Were, were we just listening to Game of Thrones? Was that your sound? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was. Oh, whoa. That's nuts. Yeah, dude. No, it was coming by this side of the this side of the table that's too. That's crazy. Yeah. He's just a bastard. <laughs> and that's a little that's a little foreshadowing for a later topic. True. But yeah, we're going to try to get on iTunes. That's going to be our next step. It's going to be our next goal because Righto. The way this video is ki- it's kind of like a video podcast. That's how I want to kind of consider our genre. That, that's of our videos. genre. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's that's the way we want to go. And also, I mean, we talked about like the the direction we want to go with the channel but also kind of catering to that how many times are we going to be in a commute somewhere yeah and i throw podcasts on all the time and i don't even care what they talk about yeah. it's just like i want something that i can engage in even if it's subliminally while i'm road raging through traffic jams yeah exactly and that's what we want to be and especially with our generation and this is what we were talking about the other day mm-hmm. with our generation i feel like as more people of our generation get into the workplace, the workplace atmosphere is kind of revolving around this idea is we don't really give a shit what you do while you're working. Just get it done. Just get the work done. Yeah. Because if you get the work done, that's all that matters in the end. So I feel like me especially, I've been listening to podcasts constantly. All the time, yeah. And people all around, I mean, people in my office and other people I talk to, friends and stuff that are on their jobs, they're listening to podcasts constantly. And it's one of those things where if you're even tuning us on youtube.com slash TJENT, with our videos, you can watch them, and we're going to still provide you with graphics and example videos and stuff yeah. like we have done before. Yeah, definitely. So it's going to give you an added incentive to watch it. But, but it's, not, it's not necessary. No, by no means. You can yeah. totally just turn us on. Put and, us in that tab. Yeah. Cl- minimize that window Boom. and just Boss listen to us. doesn't know what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, I'm supposed to be whatever that requires audio. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm, on t- I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah. You're tuning into us. Every weekday, boom at noon Eastern we time. Back. We'll talk to your bosses. Yeah, ain't no thing. Yeah, if if you need an excuse to listen to our podcasts or listen to our videos, just let us know. We got you. Yeah, we'll hook you up. Fat. We got you on the hookups. Now, getting away from the individual days and daily videos, we also have some major changes to our channel. I already mentioned before that we have our own custom URL, mm-hmm. YouTube.com/slash/tjent. Yes, sir. And we also, which is probably the biggest change and the biggest. I don't know how I want to put it. The biggest turn we have in a positive way for our channel that I think. Where are you going? Patreon. Oh. So we hope that this is kind of, this will be a way to try to jumpstart gaining more popularity and gaining more of an audience with our channel. Because how it's going to work is that we have our own very own Patreon page, patreon.com slash TJENT, just like our YouTube channel. Give a quick cap of patreon for people that don't know what it is yes i didn't know what it was like until like three four months ago yeah no that's a good idea so patreon is kind of like a gofundme or a kickstarter yeah but it's mostly for channels such as ours who can't necessarily generate a significant amount of money from ad revenue from youtube because i mean sometimes we had videos before that got demonetized yeah Yeah, we don't even know why get like 100 views and like it'll just get yeah it doesn't matter yeah so it's a way that we can generate money and everything that you donate not only just a little little squeak there yeah see it's nothing but real people we don't we don't cut anything out even even the squeaks (laughs) so how patreon works is that you can donate at a certain level you can donate us just a few examples. We only have four tiers right now because we're just right. starting out. Um, and we have one patron for our $10 range. And I don't know who that is, but they are know. a very generous, generous person. Generous yeah. lad. They will remain anonymous, but it is absolutely me. Yeah, it is with a thousand percent <laughs> certainty. 
the guy who's, right whose right name will be out. omitted. Joe, Joe Prokes is our only patient. Joey Prokes. <laughs> so if Which you don't, is fine. like that's I mean obviously. Hey, you had to get it started somewhere, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you donate just one dollar, just one dollar a month, twelve dollars a year, that's nothing. Yeah. That's that's one lunch at a decent place during your work day. That's a good way to think about it. There, right. Joe. Right. That's economics. Yeah. It's just one one. Yeah. So a dollar each month gets you a Patreon exclusive episode. So we're gonna record weekly episodes, yep. but then every month, once we start getting patrons, obviously, right, we are going to post a Patreon only exclusive video on our on patreon.com slash T J E N T for the yep. dollar subscribers. Yep. And if you just up that bid or up that donation to two dollars, mm-hmm. you get access to the audio podcast version. Right. So just the audio only on Monday. The full episode on Monday instead of that following Friday, like we will on YouTube. Right. And then $5 gets you, or $5 a month gets you the ability to tell us something to discuss on the show. Right. So you can choose a topic. We might do some weeks, we might post a few topics on the channel and have the Patreon or the Patreon supporters vote. And then sometimes we'll just take direct suggestions from you if you're on that $5 tier. With bigger Patreons, the way they work is there's some that will have like, a dollar, five dollar, ten dollar, but then they go up to like thousands, right? And bigger YouTube channels will do that. And I mean, maybe one day we'll be as big as the bigs, but we didn't want to create like these huge extravagant amounts of money because it just doesn't it doesn't seem fair, it doesn't seem right, and yeah. it just doesn't seem practical. So a dollar is really what we would expect yeah. from anybody. But we fully are aware that it's probably going to be like us and Ian, yeah, and a mom or two. <laughs> very, very, very few people. So at it's first. not. It's nothing like we expect anyone. To no, like, by no means. It's just, it's one of those things that honestly, it's just a marketing ploy for most people, mm-hmm. and it just, it, it really helps you expose yourself to a new market. It gets your name out there. So, it's a cool Patreon page. We'll have a video exclusively, like he said, to be released. We'll also have an exclusive patreon intro just to explain who we are and stuff like that so it's a cool website too i mean if anyone else is trying to look to do something similar it's not just youtube based oh yeah Um, it's anybody but that this is like the base this is we're laying the foundation you're going to be building up and the thing is for people who are patreons first get-go obviously as we get more and more up the ladder and get more where we want to be we're going to pimp the shit out of whoever helps us out oh yeah yeah i mean as we grow and as we go our you're like you're like our angel investors and we we're about to treat you right at that stakeholder meeting yeah (laughs) we're gonna absolutely know who you are when you start for us with us from the beginning we're gonna know who you are and actually that brings me to our next our final tier which is ten dollars as of right now and like tom said as we grow we'll increase the the tiers and increase the, the rewards that you get along with them as well correct with a $10 tier, you get access to the video version of the episode. So the video, entire video episode, you will get access on Monday instead of the following Hot Friday. Daddy, damn. Don't splurge and watch it all in one shot, though. No. Definitely yeah. sp- definitely spread it out. You need Tom and Joey in moderation. I don't know, though. I mean, if you get it early, maybe yeah. just blast yeah, just, just blast it. Stockpile, maybe? There you go. That's the way to do it. Yeah. But, I mean, to be honest, if we got $10 Patreons, we'd probably find out who you are. Yeah. Show up to your front doorstep, take you out to dinner. Yeah. And which reminds me of our second reward, because with the $10 tier, you get two rewards. And now, just as a side note, all the, <laughs> all these tiers, you get all the rewards previously. So, oh, let's say... Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. That's, yeah. So, if you donate $5, you're yeah. getting the ability to choose a topic True. on the show... But then you're also Get it. Yeah. getting okay. the free audio on Monday, and you're also getting Very the Patreon exclusive monthly episode. It's kind of confusing if you go on their website. Yeah. Might not always explain it. So yeah. Good point. Yeah. So if you're donating five, you're getting a lot of rewards along with the $5 tier. But the second reward with the $10 is you get a live shout out on the show. We're going to say your name. We're going to put you on the screen. You're going to know that you help us out, and you're going to okay. know exactly how much we deeply appreciate your donation truth and the donations will only go towards things that have to do with the channel so it's yeah, not like yeah it's yeah. not like you're donating let's say you become a two dollar supporter so you want to get access to the audio file it's yeah. not like we're taking your two dollars a month and going out and splurging and going to the strip club and raining dollars on people well that's not where mine would go so get yeah. your head out of the gutter Joe. yeah so I'm, i mean you know that's what i wouldn't do yeah. i wouldn't do that okay all right all right joe just saying you went straight there, and I was thinking, like, you know, 
go like, to the candy shop. Like maybe a lunch, like, like a golf. casual lunch. But okay, yeah. No. It's just it's either strip club or donations. That's that's that's, that's how we do that's here. where your mind goes. All yeah, right, okay, yeah. that's fine. So I mean, we're gonna strive to get new and better cameras yeah. and more cameras so we can have different angles. So yeah. let's say if cameras, I'm ta- cameras and mics are the biggest. Yeah. I mean, we like we said we wanted to have a third person, so having another mic yep. around for that purpose. I mean, mics and cameras. In, yeah. in all reality, that's really what most shows come down to anyway. Yeah. That's really it. Yeah. And and as of right now, we have we don't really damn yeah, good we mics. We don't really need it. So yeah. I'm not going to I don't really want to pressure anybody. No, not at Definitely all. Definitely like make it a less emphasis, but camera it's, camera would be the next. Yeah, it's next it's step. basically if you really enjoy our content and really like what you're doing like what we're doing, then we're going to make th- it better for you. Yeah, you throw some bucks on Patreon and you get yep. sick rewards. It's not yep. like you're just donating as an end donation. Yeah, you're yeah, getting yeah. sick rewards and they're only and constant, going to get like, better. We'll be constantly in contact with people. Yeah. Like even on Twitter and stuff like that. I mean the amount of people we talk to. Yeah. We were putting hundreds of direct messages a day. Oh yeah. Just responding to constant like either people telling us, you know, kill yourself yeah. or yeah. that happened. Cuz that did happen. That did that happen. happen. Oh, uh, shout out to whatever that guy. Yeah, whatever is. that dude name is. Oh, or, we asked them to check out a video and yeah. he told us to kill ourselves. So, which thanks, man. And that seems reasonable. Yeah. But it's an easy give and take. Yeah. I mean, for sure. We asked him to check out a video on YouTube. Yeah. Who the fuck are we? Yeah. It's but, a natural reaction. Yeah, and I, I mean, some people would just talk about random stuff, give us suggestions mm-hmm. to cr- criticism. Love criticism. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Then, then you don't do it the next time. Yep dope yeah and we are we will talk about anything and we will hear anything anything you think that we should do differently anything that we should talk about if you significantly disagree with what we're saying or agree with what we're saying we want to hear everything because that's another big thing that we want to make this channel about is interacting with you and discussing things that you want to hear because we'll discuss them on here release the video and then you can you can comment on the video and tell us your opinions tell us your discussions and we're just going to respond to you and and the thing is talking about like where our channel has been where we like we started with making video game videos just because we like playing video games yeah and we thought it'd be fun tom and joy gaming flashback yeah and we i mean we just we kept on trying to fine tune things we're still getting our feet but we are both under the mindset that i think there's a lot of hatred a lot of people pissed off in society in general and i don't think that topics need to be that hostile Mm -hmm. like when we look at, I mean, even getting away from politics, but just social issues in general, like I have friends who voted for someone different than me mm-hmm. and that's fine. Yeah. I lived with them. Yeah. And it was no big deal. We yeah. went to the bars together and you would. Doesn't matter. <laughs> like it, it really didn't. And mm-hmm. even friends that like they would, we would talk about politics and stuff at like our house at two in the morning. And I don't care. Like yeah. you could be anything and if you're in my house and we're having a good time, what difference does it make what you believe in or yeah. not believe in? Because to me, it's like, you're here talking with me. We're getting along for a reason. That's all I care about. Yeah. Last time I checked, president of the United States wasn't coming through my door. Yeah. You were. Yeah, so exactly. So really, I don't really care that much. But um, it just goes back to the idea that we think that anything can be a conversation if you want it to be. If you want to be pissed off and angry, that's a different story. Yeah. Because if you just want to be pissed, it's pretty easy to do. Yeah. Easy or, I mean, for some people it's easy. Yeah. But anything can be a conversation if you try. And that was and that was another thing that we wanted to achieve with this channel because especially with our previous Realist News videos, it kind of, I mean, obviously it more centered around politics. We would touch on a few different stories here and there, but mm-hmm. that was another emphasis that I wanted to start doing with this channel because we know that you you're constantly seeing and hearing things about Trump in yeah. in the news on either side people yeah. always get upset over him people get yeah. emotional irrational about Trump there's all sorts right. of just negative energy and negative thoughts that no go what. into what's going to end yesterday yeah exactly and you we know that you're constantly hearing it so we might touch on Trump a few like times here we just will. to talk about like I mean, current the, event type well, stuff and like the, like there's no escaping the fact that the president of the United States yeah. doing anything is a big deal yeah but we can't shy away from the controversy that's happened in the last year, but we feel confident enough that even if there's things that we like or dislike, we can talk about it in a really easy tone, Yep. not try and overly bash anything because we don't want to be the guys that get on and just say like, screw everything he does yeah. or on the flip side, say we love everything he does yeah. because we don't think that helps anybody. Yeah. But that's not the focus. No. I mean, we, 
as we've talked about, we'll have topics, but those topics range from what do you like about Trump? What do you dislike about Trump to like, what are the greatest feelings on earth that just irrationally make you so happy yeah. or the things that make you rationally mad? Like yeah. there's just conversations or top five gas station snacks. Yes. Great or a relationship with religion and God. You yeah. can tell that these topics are going to be all over the place. And that's what really we want to separate us. Yeah. Because that's what, and I think is that's going to help us expand our influence into more of an audience because you look at one week gets you four separate topics and the fifth and then on Friday you get yep. our special topic along with the full episode. So we're giving you four different topics and we're going to strive our best to have them be completely different, like yeah. not involved at all because right. we want to be able to give. So let's say you see four episodes that come out and it's like, well, I'm not really interested in that topic, so I won't listen to that. But like these other two topics are really interesting. Yeah. So I'm going to watch those. And that is where that it, goes. Yeah. And yeah. that's that was our end goal with that to yep. provide as many topics as possible. And to be extremely real, we just couldn't do the editing for each one of our videos that we wanted to do how we used to do it yeah. with the realist news. We couldn't afford that amount of time editing. So doing this video and doing this format allows yeah. us to not only push out more videos per week and yeah. get more content out there, but it also helps the burden on us yeah. with editing because I can edit edit it all in one swing for the entire week right. instead of on three separate occasions, yep. which is a gigantic pain, pain in the ass, ass if yeah. anyone has, has, has experienced editing. Yeah. And especially because yeah. I don't want like when we edit, I don't want to just breeze through something right. and have it not be 100%. Right, we right. want to put every effort that we have quality, yeah. into the video. And yep. in order to do that, I mean, you're looking at sitting down for four or five hours, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. I can't do that on five, three uh, times a week. So right, right, exactly. It helps us. It gives you more content. It's just better in every simple or every shape, way, or form. Yep. And that's not how the saying goes. But you get what I'm saying. Yeah. When in Rome. Yeah. It's just uncut, unfiltered, mm -hmm. casual discussion, casual conversation. And that is where we are headed with yep. our new channel. And we hope you enjoy it. And if you do, hit us up on Twitter. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube comments, Patreon. We have a lot of social media yep. avenues. We've created wherever. everything. Smoke signals. Yes. Whatever suits your Yeah, flares your flares in the air. We usually yell really loud. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. All right, Tom, what's your first topic? All right, first topic on the table. We're going to talk about automation more specifically. So automation just basically means that jobs that are available today can be done by a programmable robot, machine, something along those lines. So... The topic we want to talk about or what I wanted to talk about was what does that mean? What does that mean for the future of the U.S.? Because in all reality, you do not hear anything about it. No. And to me, that's a little bit scary because you hear about manufacturing jobs mostly being taken by machines. And yet when I see things on the news and jobs coming back and trying to get manufacturing jobs back, to me, it's like, but what jobs are there? Yeah. If they're being taken over by machines, then why the hell like aren't we talking about that as opposed to oh they're all like a company's offshoring all their manufacturing jobs already? Yeah. And I think that manufacturing is the biggest because it's the easiest for a robot to. Because we, we, me and Joey joke around where we say, you know, a computer can't program itself because yeah. if a computer programs itself, then we, we have, have a, bigger issues. We have a lot more to worry about. And <laughs> I think there's some truth to that. I also think that in a like a lower tier things could program other things yeah because that's a, i mean some apps are so smart nowadays that yeah they can adapt mm -hmm. so the biggest threat i really think is okay i'm an assembly line worker i put this here that's my job yeah and i screw that in yep and i mean i'm not saying that in a simplistic or demeaning way i just mean that that job existed but I don't think that job's going to exist for very long. Yeah. And I definitely don't think that anyone in that field, um, I'm pretty sure Stryker is one of the biggest manufacturers of uh, robots, if you want to call them robots. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anyone there would tell you that these jobs are coming back anytime soon. Well, and it's, and it's to the point where it's like, if you are worried about your job getting taken by an immigrant, is that your job will probably most likely be taken by, a, be robot taken by an, a robot. Yeah. And especially why when Tom first brought up this topic, what I wanted to talk about too, as well as, I mean, that has obviously has to do with automation yeah. is the fact that a bunch of people are pushing for 
a raise in the minimum wage and is that I would consider myself more on the left side and more as a liberal or a Democrat. Yeah. But this is one topic of discussion and legislation point where I significantly disagree because when you look at raising the minimum wage, let's say you raise minimum wage to $15 mm -hmm. an hour. So you're forcing places, <clears throat> excuse me, like McDonald's to pay their workers a minimum wage mm -hmm. of $15. And if you're a massive conglomerate, and you're looking at all your McDonald's stores and you're thinking about paying all those employees $15. Right. When you look at when you go to McDonald's and you interact with the cashier, you're just telling them what like pretty much a number on the menu you want. Yeah. And that, that can easily be, be replaced by a computer. Right. Exactly. And service low, low, uh, I don't want to sound like derogatory or anything, but no. low level service jobs, yeah. I would call it that, um, are definitely on the chopping block. Mm -hmm. And, Especially with the amount of millennial generation people who aren't going to these places anymore, which is a vast majority. Yeah. That's, I mean, that, that, that changes everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, what, I, what I do think is very interesting, there's two other avenues I kind of wanted to touch on that I think is kind of fascinating and one kind of pisses me off a little bit. Um, one is they're talking, there's been a lot of talk about well, if robots take over workers, should they pay taxes? Should employees have to pay robot tax? Hmm. And I think that's bullshit, really? to be completely honest. Yeah, I think it definitely sounds like it. To I understand the um the, the rationale, like, oh, we don't have employees, they're not paying taxes, we're about to lose a bunch of tax revenue, we gotta make it up. Yeah. But I think it's pretty lame to put a regulation in for a company that's doing what companies do yeah. and that's to make money and to save to, money. It's to make money and it's to, it's to increase revenue and cut down expenses yeah. and you're cutting down your labor is the most expensive thing you'll ever do. Mm -hmm. Like anytime people talk about things, unless you're in like precious m like metals and stuff like that, labor is the most expensive thing that you can possibly cut off your books. And if you can do that, why get punished for it? Yeah. Like to me, it's like, and they'll, and then like the counter argument would be okay. Well, it's less in taxes, but it's like, they aren't people mm -hmm. <laughs> like there's a reason why. And, and with robots too, if one goes haywire, it's a way bigger issue than with a person yeah. because a person will catch it yeah. and then it's done. Yeah. Robot runs a whole line of malfunctioning parts and you're f yeah. You're like your whole day could be. F yeah. Or month or year, whatever. Yeah. So I think that's pretty bogus. Yeah. To be honest, if I mean they make you pay taxes for a robot that yeah. does a human. Strength. And I mean, and the only argument I would say that's, for robots is the fact that i mean especially health concerns when it comes to any employee whatsoever mm -hmm. health insurance or liability on the job especially when it comes to manufacturing jobs yeah, that's fair. is none because i mean obviously if something happens to a robot if something falls on a robot right if a robot slips into a machine no. it's all your deal like yeah, as an owner of the business pay it. yeah i mean that's a significant expense yeah and, and that's probably pissed. gonna be more of an expense sometimes depending on what the legal is. issues yeah yeah if it's with a normal employee so yeah i mean there's definitely some negatives and yeah. positives yeah yeah with like with anything yeah i just i mean if you really start to dig into some of like the wall street journal articles that talk about this guys like mark cuban mark cuban had a huge uh like scholastic journal i'd call it about how everyone's talking, like you said, with immigration taking jobs, but no one's talking about robots. And he was basically just saying, like, listen, guys, I understand what your fear is. I understand that there's concerns, there's issues, but know what you're being pissed about. Yeah. Because robots are going to come, and there's probably nothing you're going to be able to do about it. Because that employer that you're pissed at for saying, oh, well, they hired a bunch of cheap labor, blah, blah, blah. When labor all of a sudden becomes free after a certain amount of time, obviously, because, mm. I mean, the, the upfront cost of a robot is very expensive. Yeah. But in the long term, if you're telling me that on average they're going to be spending, like, all, close to nothing, what business owner isn't going to do it? Yeah, and, and especially when it comes to, like I said, raising the minimum wage, if you're pissed about not getting a high enough wage, and especially when it comes to the human resources element, we were talking about advantages between robots yeah. and humans and employees. What, robots are not going to have sexual assault allegations. And guess what, they're, guess what the employer is going to say? They're going to look at you and go, Yeah, yeah. If you want to... Peace. Yeah, and like we said, we're not degrading any job <laughs> no, whatsoever. No, not at but, all. Yeah, it's blunt. It's, I agree, but it's just... just yeah, if they're if you're it's if, happening already. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, it's like we've seen places with 
or McDonald's with kiosks already that lets you enter in your order. Yeah, even I've been to a restaurant where there's no waiter. Yeah. There's just, you go in, there's like a tablet, and you just order all your food, and there's a food runner. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, I enjoyed that, but it's not for everyone. Restaurants are a little bit different. Mm-hmm. But a fast food joint, no one cares about the service. You know what you're getting. Yeah. And you know it's cheap as hell. And especially and that, with our generation, and I mean, this is kind of coming at it from a different angle, but especially with our generation, it's just more and more becoming part of everyday life that people are starting to eat healthier i mean we're not yeah. all eating healthier right. but it's definitely becoming it's more, more prominent than, now than ever and especially yeah and with fast food restaurants especially if they start to see a downtick in their business and it's say like, okay well we got to get profits back to where they need to be yeah then what are we going to do we're yeah. going to put your computers on as cashiers right. we're going to ha- say just put in your cash or slice uh slide yeah. your credit card in yeah. and you don't have to deal with someone and, it, and there's no waiting like if you run into i mean we've all been into those mcdonald's where you could be sitting at a gas register and be sitting there for maybe four or five minutes and i mean even four or five minutes might not seem like a long time but when you're a business owner looking at that and you're looking at that turnover time it's like that's your job to, yeah like, that could be cut. four or five customers that a computer could run through right and just blast through it yeah it's definitely it's a weird topic because tech just happens so freaking fast. Yeah, it's a ridiculous. I mean, I mean, it's a it's a vertical line at this point. And and the, and the thing that's in terms nuts, of the graph of technology <laughs> investment. Well, <laughs> and the like the thing I always come back to is when I was in seventh grade, eighth grade. When I was in eighth grade, the first iPhone came out, and I think about how far we've come in just about ten years. Like we just ha- like passed the tenth anniversary, and to me, it's like that's only been ten years, and we went from. The first iPhone to w- like what we have now. Remember the Nokia bricks, like the ones that, that you could duct tape and have this still work. <laughs> like I had a razor for like the iPhone was like like a spaceship. You yeah. would have thought. Yeah. And I had a razor, and I remember thinking like, man, I can text. Like, yeah. I have I have worm on this or snake, whatever that game oh, was, yeah, snake. asteroid, and I was like, yeah, bros, custom ringtones. You can take your Angry Birds. They sound like, <laughs> shit, but whatever. And then yeah. when I got my iPod Touch, it was just like. Yeah, because that was the first that came out before the iPhone, right? That was because it was the iPod. I, b- I believe I believe they came at the same time. Because when you look at, I mean, you look at these vinyls behind us, and you look at when vinyls were prominent, and you show that, like, say, if you go back in time with an iPod, like, just even the first generation iPod, Dude, the fact that you could say like something like this can have all of these. Yes, yeah, take five thousand of these. Yeah, and, and you can fit them. Put on it in there. One little machine. Hot damn. Yeah, but thinking about that with robots it's just it's pretty mind-boggling to think that we haven't even probably hit the cusp no. of what we're capable of and wh- where does it like where is it gonna go obviously nobody knows but i do think it deserves more air time and not to mention you think about maybe maybe there's times where businesses or like owners of businesses are already seeing places where they can replace. And sometimes maybe they don't want to pick the PR hit yeah. because if you're a business and you're prominent for employing a large amount of people, if you propose this, that's going to save your company a bunch of money yeah. and going to help your bottom line. Exactly. But what's the PR significance of that? Right. Because if a news organization or anybody in general doesn't like you or doesn't like the business that you do or any sort of reason just puts that out there to say, okay, you're investing in machines, but we're not going to put it like that. We're right. going to put, like, you're laying over 100,000 people off. Right. And that's what people are going to know, not that, that yeah. you're making machines so that you can save your bottom line. Yeah, and that's another great point just because, I mean, how do you handle that? Yeah. How do you tell people that? And what happens when the story isn't, oh, people are, like, I mean, even companies today, up until a couple of years ago, no one was talking about companies offshoring labor. No. No one really cared. And now it's kind of more of a big deal. But people still have no idea where their shit's made. Yeah. I mean, it, a year and a half ago, people started figuring out that Ford trucks were actually made in Mexico. It's probably made more of a bigger deal because with Trump and his administration, I mean, he he like immigration has been such a focus in this election. I feel like not only are more things coming out about where maybe, significant products are made, may, but maybe people are becoming more informed just by generalization. By my counter to that would be. I don't think with with Trump at least. I mean, I don't think it's definitely not the only reason, but no, 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 it's definitely no, 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 no. significantly no, no, no. helped. Hear me, fact. hear me out though. I don't think the immigration thing with Trump was anything to do with jobs ever, because this election I never really heard anyone say, "Oh, they're taking your jobs." Well, you're talking about violence and crime then. Violence and crime. Yeah. The, what was the first thing he said? He yeah. said 
the rapists or murderers or bringing crime, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Obviously paraphrasing, but really had nothing kind to of. do with... <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but but still, like, yeah. he never really talked about jobs. Yeah. Ever. And then... But he did talk about companies bringing... Like, taking jobs overseas and bringing them back. Yes. But that's true. that was definitely a selling point. But again, even before that, people were bitching about, oh, everyone, like, put it in China, put it in China... Any business owner that makes manufacturing stuff in China, especially like retail products, like stuff like this or yeah. whatever, anyone will tell you that it's cheaper in China. Yeah. And there's, the, it, it's just like, I mean, how do you tell someone, hey, you can do it for even cheaper than that and have them not do it? Yeah. And I just don't see that happening. And I mean, my kind of, it's not like a conspiracy theory, but my theory with China is everyone's talking about how cheap it is. I don't think it's going to be very cheap in 10 years when they start getting some pretty crazy labor laws. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Because everyone talks about how great China is, and I get real pissed off because I'm like, yeah, they also don't have a work environment that's healthy or sustainable. So when everyone finally revolts or a government actually comes in, like everyone talks about how great China is, right? But what happened in the 1800s with the U.S. when kids who were eight years old were looking working coal mines? Eventually, enough people said, guess what? We can't do this. This isn't healthy, and this isn't stable. And then we made labor laws, and they still adapt. China hasn't done that yet. Not to mention, there's no other country on earth that has suicide nets on their business buildings. Well, Taiwan. Is that is that where the nets are? I mean, from what I know, they're in Taiwan. Okay, because I thought they were at the Apple manufacturing. In is it in Taiwan? Okay. Yeah. See, fact check, live on air. But, Taiwan. But not China. I mean, granted, their labor laws are not. But but here's here's exemplary. let me ask you this though, yeah. and and I could be wrong. It could it could be China. Exemplary. But. Let, would you be surprised if, if there's su- if there's suicide nets in China? No, I thought there was, so obviously not. <laughs> and, and that's the thing, like, even if there's not, yeah. is, shouldn't that tell you something? Yeah, the fact that you're not even like, oh man, I, I know about those sweatshops in China. Yeah, how many times have you heard that? Yeah, but that will catch up to them, mm-hmm. and that'll hit everyone's bottom line in the U.S. when they say, well, sh- now we can't make it for that cheap anymore, and I don't want to pay to have all my shit shipped. From China to U.S., Taiwan to U.S., Japan to U.S., anywhere. And guess guess, guess what's in house in the U.S. And guess what? You don't have to worry about labor all, labor laws with ever robots. But again, just the idea of taxing a robot, like it just that irks me. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. And I just feel like I could totally see some freaking person or group getting so pissed off about robots have feelings too yeah like, give them their rights yeah and just be like i can oh let's just hope it never gets there because i'll lose my mind yeah but like guess guess what a company's gonna do when things get more expensive they're gonna look in house and say oh my god there's a company that can fix this all for me that's yeah Don't you want to talk about a great business idea a business centered around making machines that are like service business based yeah like and that take orders we'll see i mean we'll see what happens in the next coming years because it, it still is expensive yeah it is not cheap and no. this does not mean that everything's going to go at once because not all business is going to yeah and it's definitely not going to be a quick snap process oh, it's definitely no. going to be an overtime process but pretty much what we're saying is that if you're talking jobs and keeping your job and yep. Helping unemployment and all this stuff, it's not immigrants that we need to worry about. It's definitely machines. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess my, I mean, the whole reason why I wanted to talk about it was just because no one's talking about it. Yeah. I mean, in all reality, to me, the biggest takeaway is just, even if we don't know, why not just mention it? Yeah. I mean, if we're, if you're going to talk about jobs in the world at all in general, you need to talk about (laughs) one of the biggest Possibly the biggest disruptor we'll, we've seen in history. Yeah. I mean, you have things like the Industrial Revolution. You had things with, you know, Ford Motors actually doing the assembly line. You had these big, big promoters of new lines of work. But with robots, yeah, you have robot manufacturers. And yeah, you have people programming, maybe doing maintenance. But the gain compared to the loss on jobs available is completely imbalanced. Yeah. Like the amount of people that you lose compared to the ones you're going to create through that industry itself. It's not even close. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good point. My second topic of discussion. And remember when I did that, Oh, Oh, you're just a bastard. (laughs) That great impression. 
that's where we're at Castle Black right now. My second topic is just Game of Thrones predictions in general. Because if you don't know, which you should know, because we're back. Because you're a human being. We're back. Game of Thrones. We're back. Is on July 16th. Through the spring, which sucks because I'm way used to it to being this in the spring. Well, I'm I'm used to talking about this in the spring. Yeah. So if you're, if you're watching this right now, this would be the third overall topic. So you're watching this on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Which is July. We're filming this. We're filming this eight days in advance. Yes. So you'll have about like four days to to put this little nugget in your ear. Yeah. Chew on it a little bit. Yeah. And then go, lo- then go into Sunday. Just yeah, exactly. And just be ready, go, Stark, for the reckoning yeah. of Game of Thrones. It's about to get nutty. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. And just for a few, I mean, just for reference before we start this discussion, he hasn't watched any of the trailers because they released Correct. two promo trailers. Yes. You haven't watched either of them. Yes. I watched them, but like one I watched while I was at the beach, so I couldn't really see it. Yeah, yeah. And I don't really remember anything from the trailer, and, so and there's no spoilers. Before obviously, you, before yeah, but there is. If you haven't watched the show, we're gonna spoil like. Oh yeah, if you a have f- load of stuff. Yeah, if if you are not updated with the full game of Thrones, holy, f- don't watch. This. Turn off this video right now because yeah. we're probably gonna discuss some pretty. And crazy I shit. I've read, I'm caught up in all the books. Yeah, because I read some of them and then listened to some of them on tape on like long drives and yeah. stuff. So like some of the, like the minute details I don't really remember like some of the other storylines that aren't in the show yeah. we won't talk about because you know they're not in the show yeah most people probably watch it more than read it so we're just not gonna follow those because yeah. they're kind of irrelevant yeah if they come in the show then sweet yeah shout out Lady Stoneheart Lady Stoneheart which I have yet to figure out who it is he knows who it is because he read the books and he said that it was a person in season was it season one two and three and made appearances and I've been trying to because I've been rewatching episodes yeah. And I've been trying to figure out who she is. And, and anyone I, who knows who she is, like he's never gonna yeah. guess it. There's just yeah. no way. Yeah, please, if you know, please comment, shoot me a tweet on on the tweeter. Just do me something so I can bail out of this just guessing game. But yeah. season seven premieres July sixteenth on Sunday. Is it at ten or is it nine? That's that's the debacle I go with every. Su- I'll I'll know it going into Sunday. And I have I'll HBO now, it. so I'll but, have it sitting in my queue waiting for me. Anyway, but it, you got to wait an hour though. Oh, do I? Yeah, because it doesn't go live right away. Sometimes That's right. it goes away, like you delay now. That's right. Now I'm just gonna put it in my head that it's an hour later every time. So I just like that's gonna be. Yeah, the you premiere. get noticed. Yeah, yeah. Because but, but no, no, any social media for that hour. Oh no, it's no, zero no. dark one. Oh, oh yeah, like, yeah. We're in the stone <laughs> ages then. Yeah, dude. It is no phones, no nothing. Because man, it's gonna be popping. Yeah, and along with these predictions for this week, we're also throughout the entire. Season seven, we're going to record a reactions video to each episode. Whoa! The Monday night, so can it's going to react to that. You can. That's a reaction to the Game of Thrones reactions, yeah. and I created our own little intro, but you'll wait and see that. So, <laughs> I created it, and it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna wait and see that's, it. That's dope, dude. So we're gonna record on Monday night. Because we're not going to record it right after the Sunday night episode because because I'll up. I'll have to recover my brains yeah. from all over the floor yeah probably especially with tears. how this much yeah or I'm waiting combination of yeah I'm gonna pu- just taking I'm gonna a shower up I'm going to be taking a shower after I'm every be a episode cold tub after every oh, yeah <laughs> yeah so we're going to record it Monday John. night <laughs> he's going to die again so you shut your goddamn mouth <laughs> that's not happen. even funny no it wouldn't it wouldn't happen because no, people would just be it. pissed off they brought him back yeah. for a reason yeah. unless he dies in the last episode and then in which case like whatever yeah so we're going to record the reactions on Monday night and you're going to get them throughout the season obviously just for the entirety of the season not after that along with the second topic on Tuesday at noon eastern time so Tom I'm going to we'll just we'll just talk about general predictions but yes. one question that I want to discuss I right already, away I already know what's going to be and I, I'm going to think about... My what do you think is going to be the biggest, like... For me, it was probably Jon Snow dying because I didn't know that it was going to happen. I saw it a little late, but I was able to stay off yes. social media and save it from uh, yeah. being yeah, spoiled for I me. I was with you when it all went down, but I already knew he was going to die. Yeah, and I remember you just looking at my face when it happened. I was like... That's probably the most shocked that I've ever been. So, in this season, what do you think is going to be the one moment where, there, where everyone's going to be like, holy f***, I didn't think that was going to happen. I, it's tough because there's not a lot of characters left. Yeah. To really f- with your head, because especially because they took out six in the last episode well, of season six, and that's six. the thing. Like, there's just there isn't a whole ton left. I mean, I would say the most popular characters are by far 
John, Tyrion, and Daenerys. Yeah, yeah, like, those are like the big three. They're definitely everyone wants them to have their own dragons. There's three, yeah. blah blah blah. It works all perfect. That's not going to happen because there is that rumor that Tyrion is not actually Tywin's son, right? And that Targaryen slept around, and yeah. Tyrion was a bastard. A bastard. A bastard. <laughs> I, you gotta admit, I might not be good with a general accent, <laughs> but I can sure as hell say bastard. Just so the best of them. Which, and obviously we found out that John's Targaryen, right. which if anyone follows the storyline, that shouldn't have even... Like, it's, it's pretty funny that they released a graphic after the final episode because yeah. they're like, you should have seen this from the show, but apparently not a lot of people have seen it from the show, so yeah. here's a graphic. And I mean, I don't know. Like, just like following the storyline, I wasn't like, that was the biggest conspiracy theory and it yeah. made the most sense. Yeah. I was almost like kind of surprised in the, just the sense that I was like, oh, wow, it was exactly what I thought it was. Yeah, exactly. Instead of like... John's actually like a part dragon. Yeah. He <laughs> but, turns into a dragon at night. Yeah. But I think Tyrion's going to die this season. You think? That's my big, bold, bad prediction. I don't think he's going to make it to the end. Because I've been saying that for every season, and I feel like at this point, I just kind of got to... Because there's certain characters, it's weird, because of how Game of Thrones works, there's certain characters like John, because we, I mean, we both think now that he's untouchable. Yeah. But it's like, especially with... Tyrion, he's gone through, what is it, like three trial by combats now, mm -hmm. and he's gotten away. I mean, he's killed his dad on the toilet, which, yeah. side note, shout out to asshole Ian, Ian my brother, who... What'd he do? I'll tell you what he did, Tom. We were talking about Game of Thrones, and I was in, I don't, I forget Wait. when the death was, was it like season four, I think, because uh, it was right after the the mountain versus the... the, the yeah, uh, yeah, it was. The Viper. Yeah. Correct. So it was, I was in like season three, and I think yeah. when Tywin died, it was season four. And Ian and I were talking about Game of Thrones, you know, shooting the typical sh**. And Ian says, dude, didn't that suck when Tyrion shot his dad on the toilet? And I was like, I I don't know that sucked because I didn't see it happen. And then Ian was like, oh, dude, I was, I was just kidding. Was that just didn't getting happen. Dude. I was just like, I was it, with it didn't actually happen. And then I watched Game of Thrones and watched Tyrion with a crossbow walk into that Pretty bathroom. Dope. That, I mean, Tyrion's gangster. Yeah. Like, don't get me He's wrong. He's arguably my favorite character I love show. Tyrion. I'm not saying I want him to die. I yeah. really don't. You just think he's There's going characters to. I really want to die yeah. very, very badly yeah. that probably will last for ever which which brings me into an, another interesting point because and i and this is i want you i want everyone to comment about this oh because i want someone to agree with me on this no one and will <laughs> and it's not buddy will it's not that i like there's such, cersei oh cersei cersei I thought you're going a different end. oh you thought i was going to say sam and sam and gilly gilly yes Ugh. well that, that's another situation because yes. i think they're significantly important no because, cersei but how dare you yeah because this is even worse and this has been a constant argument since day one, really, with Game yeah. of Thrones between Tom and because I. Because you just want to... Okay, just go. Just go. Okay. Yes, I think Cersei is attractive. Sue me, but that is not the reason why I think that she should be in the show, is that it is. I just think she's a great character. And I think she's a great villain because she's had a hand in killing, really, when you look at it, except Everyone. for Joffrey, obviously. Yeah. She's had a hand... Yeah, except Ramsay, too. Ramsay, too, yep. She's had a hand in really... And Ned. Because that was all Joffrey. True, but I feel like... She did not want that to happen. She was pissed. Yeah, I, I mean, pretty much everyone was, because yeah. that set off the entire yeah. flames that was yeah. the War of the no, North. She, like, she wanted Ned dead. Yeah. but Okay, well, one. maybe you just screwed my logic there. But yeah. I still think... I mean, I just think she's a good character. She's, I mean, because you have to have... But she's not even the best villain in the show. Like, that logic, okay, she's a good villain. She wasn't the best villain. I don't think John. she was the best one, but she's... But then why keep her? I mean, because your argument is is the White Walkers are the best villain, right? Well, they're the biggest problem. I mean, look at, look at the she, villains right the, now. They're not the best villain. The right. villains right now. Right Who are now? The Who's the best villain right now? Uh, Sam and Gilly. <laughs> but other than that... <laughs> Personal villain. <laughs> villain yes. of the show. But yeah, well, now it's all White Walkers versus the world. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's that was the... Pre like, everyone forgot about that, that. Like, when they said winter is coming, everyone's like, oh... Yeah, I mean, that happened in episode one, season one. Like, no I mean, one, that's the Stark's everyone, motto. Everyone, like, forgot about that, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, we need to, like, stop thinking about this throne for, like, two seconds because yeah. we're all about to get mother murked yeah. in, like, two seconds by that badass witch king on that horse. Oof. Dude, when he raised those people up in hard home. Dude, he's a baller. Just straight goosebumps. Like, he's a stud Just mother. seeing John So's face, just... Wait, <laughs> everyone that died is now part of his army, and everyone that so... ever dies... <laughs> So what, be a part we, of his... so what do we do? So what do, what do we do? Well, the answer is dragons. But yeah. regardless, yeah, who are f 
gigantic. Yeah, that's going to be illmatic. Because if you, I mean, if you haven't seen the trailer, I mean, have you seen like still pictures from yeah, the trailers? Yeah, I watched the first trailer. Okay. I just didn't watch the second one. Okay. So, I'm kind of over trailers. Yeah. So if you haven't seen the trailers, just take our word for it. They're f- huge. They're dope. Yeah. They're mega dope. Yeah. So I'm very interested to see those. And I'm just interested to see the entire season in general. I agree. But I'm in terms of excited. who I think, and, and that's interesting. And I mean, I asked you the question, but I don't know if I have an answer myself. I think, I don't think there's any way that John or Daenerys dies because I think that oh. both of them are going to end the show on top. And that's what, and that's what everyone wants. It's what everyone thinks. And I do think that will happen. Yeah. Because typical Game of Thrones fashion yeah. would end with the White Walkers taking over the world, yeah, right. killing oh, everybody, right. but, but the and then the show is, just sort of ends. But typical ends. Game of Thrones fashion really hasn't happened last season. Like, quite, yeah, yeah. Like Marjorie dies, like so, some character. That wildfire sh- was pretty wild. And then they immediately go from the wildfire to Tom and jumping out of the window. It's like they were haymaking, haymaking left and right. Yes, on that but, they weren't, but they weren't like... like like Tomlin was a character, yeah, but he wasn't a big character. Yeah, I mean, he was just he a was king, the king, so his ca- his little, character was big, and he was but him as like a personality was, on the show. He was a b- yeah, like he didn't do anything. He yeah, just, I mean, he was having strings pulled. And, well, seven. and like I mean, shout out to him for being like the good Lannister, yeah, because he didn't want the to only wrong. good one. Yeah, but or technically he was a Baratheon, right? <sighs> yeah, it's, it All gets right. tangled. But Joey. it was a Baratheon, All right, Joey. Well, technically he's a Lannister because you know Cersei yeah. and Jaime bump uglies. Yeah, but. Yeah, that's true. In so, the names, so actually, yeah, in the yeah, throne yeah. names of Game of Thrones, he's a, yeah. a uh, Baratheon. Yeah, and he's not a bastard. No, he's not a he's not a bastard. That's gonna happen a lot, a lot. on this show. But a lot. I agree. I think, uh, I think John and Daenerys. Because I think, well, because they're cousins, right? Because that's how the diagram portrayed right. it. Right. Is their cousins? Right. Yeah. I think they'll end up on top because. Because I initially thought that they would end up together, like yeah, King well, Queen. like everyone did. Yeah, and I think people still want that to happen. Yeah, and I don't think they really understand the whole incest thing. I how mean, that works in those times. Yeah, I, I mean, guess because I mean, look at that dude. Look at that, Cersei. Yeah, I mean, look at the dude that the the uh, the Night's Watch went like that uh, wild wing, the Lionling guy with all the daughters, and then he sacrificed all the sons. And then you remember the incestuous baby that is who who has that. Oh, Sam and Gilly, the worst characters ever created in any show ever. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, please comment there's, too if you share. So boring. If, if you share in Tom's oh, hatred God. of Sam and Gilly, dude, Sam, please comment as well. Sam has literally zero benefit to the show, and he's the first one in like a gajillion years that kills a white walker, the most badass ever. And he, oh, of all the people, Samwise Gamgee from the Shire. Comes in well because his last name Tali. I mean that's a big that's a big, I, uh, big deal. But Sam deal isn't is the a, word. I was but Sam for. isn't a big deal. That's True the thing. You can have the dopest last name, but you can be a little. But he's killed a White Walker. He's L- survived six seasons. So I because because that's the thing with this show is that you got to if think you survive that, that you have you, a purpose. If I you survive it. this long, yes. and especially because I mean you look at Sam and Gilly. Yes. There's no one really after him. Because when you look at when you look I at wish. all the deaths in Game of Thrones, they've all come as a reason. Yes, they're not just some random big character gets killed by someone who doesn't even have vengeance towards them. All of them have to do with vengeance. Eh, some there's sort of a lot way. of deaths that just happen for shits and gigs. Which one? I well, mean, because you look at all the big ones. Okay, let's just step through the but big the ones. big ones. But big ones, yes. Ned, Ned Stark death. Yeah. Revenge. Yeah, obviously. Red but wedding. I, I just mean like. Random, like right. No, the I'm, hound I'm, going well, I'm talking big smashing. characters. Yeah, but big characters, I get that. But I'm just arguing that Sam shouldn't be a big character because he, sh- he should have died immediately. Yeah, and I'm sure he does have a purpose in the long run. But I mean, it's I his just, last name. But I just don't care. Like, yeah, fair enough. I literally just want him dead because they spend like for me in the books, it's not a big deal because it's a storyline and it's interesting. But. I love Game of Thrones so much, and when I only have an hour of real estate, and you spend 25 f-ing minutes on some stupid, oh, we're going to walk through the snow, and we go get Gilly because I love her. Bleh. I'm going to read a book because I'm Sam. It's yeah, they like, all make fun of reading and then, books. Meanwhile, reading G- books. Like, meanwhile, John's like on his way to the yeah. like the wall or something, and I'm like, I want to watch anything else. I-, I get that reasoning. Other than you two. Like, the fact that they cut out Bran for an entire season. That was weird. But, and he is arguably the most important character he in the show. He could be the key to everything. He can solve the entire thing. 
And you're telling me that we're going to spend time with Sam and Gilly. That just makes no sense. Yeah. And Sam could be ultra important, but he could be ultra important with five minutes of the show. Yeah. But anytime I, if this season open opens with them, I'm <laughs> the skipping. first, the first I'm season, skipping, like, the first I'm season of episode of one of season seven attention. is going to open with Sam in a library. Oh my God. <laughs> And then George R. is going to come out with his middle fingers up saying, F*** you, Tom. Yeah. Specifically, you, you, Tom. I know how much you hate this. So, and this does not really have to do with predictions. It's kind of just curious. And I think the people out there might want to know. Because if you watch Game of Thrones, you can totally relate to situations where you're like, I don't know what to do with my body. And I'm not responsible oh my for God. my feelings or my actions. That has happened to me twice. 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 Okay. So what, if you had to, I mean, you can tell me both. Yeah. But if you had to pick one that was the most like, holy sh- one of my watching moment yeah. out of the first six seasons, what would it be for you? Because for me, it's like, there's not even close a numero uno. Mine's, mine's Red Wedding, for sure. Red Wedding? Yeah. Because the Red Wedding, so when I got into the show, my roommate had already watched it, and we were all, then all of us got into it, we all started watching at our own pace. The Red Wedding, I legitimately stopped watching the show. I was so pissed off, and I've never been that angry at a show that I stopped watching it. It took me, I told it, like three and a half weeks just to finish that season, and there was only one episode, and I couldn't do it. I was like, "Nope, f- that." Rob was the key. You killed him, whatever. And Rob then was got, such a baller. He was such a great character, and the Starks in general. I yeah, mean, who? Do, everyone loves the Starks. Yeah, I will but say this. But that's what makes Game of Thrones Game but of Thrones. A, I will say this. I was I was a Jon Snow day one. The very first episode, someone asked me who my favorite character. I said Jon, Jon immediately. Fair enough. And then Oberyn came in. Yeah, and he tried to steal my heart. Speaking of Oberyn. And then he got his face exploded. Is that the correct term? That would be the correct term that I would use because that was the one scene. And, and like that wasn't the scene that shocked me the most in terms of a character I thought was going to live died. But just, and that's the thing with it Game of brutal. Thrones, right? Is that the deaths are just so, and it's like. They're real. Yeah. They're Whoa. so, like if you were to picture like what we were watching, or I was watching the other night, was the fight between the Hound and the guy with the the fire sword, with oh, the Brotherhood, yeah. Yeah. the Brotherhood without banners or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he just like it's that final blow. He just go comes down on the sword and like goes like three quarters he, through his and arm, just and it's just hacking. like hanging. Yeah, and the blood just spurts everywhere. It just yep. seems so, so real. Yeah. And when Oberyn was circling the mountain, talking a whole bunch of, I shit, knew and it was over. As soon as he tripped him up. Because he tripped him up and then punched his face and all of his teeth went everywhere. Yeah. He, and then he, he crushed his head. Yeah. As soon as he tripped him up, I'm like, yeah. oh, f***ing A, this is going to happen. And then just, they showed his thumbs initially going in and they did like a flashback mm-hmm. right to the mountain. And then they just, like the sound and like the Everything. force. It and was... then of course, typical Game of Thrones fashion, they have to do a quick camera shot of the post. Yeah. Yeah. You don't the get post the, the, image. the courtesy of like just hearing it. Yeah. You get to see his wife react. Yes. And then you get to see his Who is face. now a meme that is long lived. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, classic. Yeah. Yeah. But I then mean, you get Tyrion's face of just like. Yeah. I mean, that that death. It was pretty rough. And it was just like, that stuck in my head for days yeah, after. Yeah. And I mean, that one sucked just because Oberyn was. Oberyn was such a baller. My second favorite character. He was yeah. such a stud. And the second, I'm like, you're going to be Tyrion's champion. Tyrion, yeah. I love Tyrion. Yeah. It's going to be dope. Kill the mountain. Revenge. Mountain sucks. A-O. Yeah. And the second he started like taunting him and stuff, I was like, it's over. All right. See you, Oberyn. Yeah. Loved you while you lasted. Hopefully Dorne's dope. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And and especially, and it was interesting because rewatching the season before, and we talked about this before, yeah. rewatching the season over, I pick up on so many little things. Yeah. And foreshadow. A yeah. Ton. And I picked up, um, what was the one I told you today was, uh, What's the little kid's name that stabbed John? Oh, Ollie. Ollie, yeah. Because initially when I uh, – it must have just breezed over or I yeah. must have been watching the episode and maybe was texting someone during that scene or something. But you, yeah. But I didn't know because I thought when Ollie would talk about his family getting murdered by wildlings, yeah. I thought they were just talking about some flashback. and Whenever it happened, yeah. Yeah, but I understand now that he saw Ingrid put an arrow through his dad's face. Yeah. And that's why he shot yeah. her eventually, and that's why he was so pissed about yeah. John laying the wildlings in. Yeah. And it's definitely interesting, especially because from the wed- Red Wedding, yeah. I didn't initially know exactly why they traded on jo- uh, on Rob, but knowing that he married the foreign girl, yeah, broke his vow with Walter Frey, and what was the other thing that I thought? Oh, yeah, Kyle Starks. Oh, right, right. Because... Yeah. Uh, 
Lady Stark release Jamie to try to get the daughters back, and yeah. then Call Stark turned on him, and then Rob could have kept Call Stark in the jail, but he, but he decided to take his head, and that led him down a very dangerous road, which led Rob, to the Red Wedding. Rob made mistakes, yes, but Walter Frey was bought out. Yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, so. he. I mean, he said it like right after. He's and like, he, I have Tywin like, Lannister backing me now. Yeah, and I mean, like he just. I mean, Walter Frey doesn't give. A f- no, that's why him going bye bye. We be in. Oh yeah, yeah. I can't wait because I'm re- I'm gonna try to re I'm gonna try and yeah. make it to season six and be fully caught up again by the time Sunday rolls around, and I cannot wait to see like just season season five and season six yeah. were so good, True. especially season six. Let me ask you this though: if you could have ask one me. one character die, who would it be? If I, th- if I wanted one ca- one yeah. character to die, yep. Mine's that's tough. <laughs> Mine's real tough. So I got a couple of people on my chopping block, and Sam's definitely up there. <laughs> but if I had to pick one, he wouldn't be him. Well, we because Ramsey was the ultimate. And when I look at the entirety of that show, I mean, Joffrey and Ramsey obviously stick out above the rest. Yeah. Because, I mean, pretty much it was a consensus well, that everyone, everyone wanted everyone, to, everyone talks about Ramsey, but you forget how much you really hated Joffrey and in How the much beginning. of a dick he yeah. was. Like, Ramsey's awful, but... And it, like obviously short short term memory, you like only deal with one awful person at a time. But, yeah. I mean, rewatch the show, and then you're like, oh my god, Joffrey was such a douche. Man. And 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 the rape scene with Sansa, Sophie Turner. I yeah. mean, that that's probably where the majority of people like that was just the cliff yeah. off of Ramsey. Yeah. But I mean, he, he gave you plenty of reasons to hate him. Yeah, other than that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you could pick one now, it's alive now. That's tough. I would probably do. Probably that that lead Greyjoy dude. Although he's not, what's the because is Dion? that no, the dude that oh their uncle yeah was it their uncle is that because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. dad's brother right mm-hmm. that when he threw him off the bridge yeah probably that dude. But the thing is is that I don't know because he hasn't really been along been around that long. You can't really hate him yet. Yeah, because I don't give a fuck about the Greyjoys. Yeah, like because you think they're gonna have any significant impact on the story? I mean, they have to in some way. Yeah, they will. But because I mean, they're with their ships. Daenerys. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're working their way. Oh yeah, because right before that's they, right, they Marine. The deal. Yeah. Marine, that's right. Yeah, they're already with her. Yeah. So, but my my top three would be the Mountain, Theon. The Mountain would probably be mine too. And Cersei. Yeah, Cersei. <laughs> Cersei's not my top three, but I know she's going to die. Yes. Like I think she's a great character. No, yeah, she will. Yeah. And and like I said before, please let us know in the comments or any way possible you can whether you agree with me that Cersei is a great character or if you agree with Tom that. She Sam and Gilly should not even be a part of the show anymore. That is, those are two completely different. Well, I'm just saying, if you agree with, oh. if you agree with either one of those, so you're not even gonna let them disagree with you. You can disagree with me all you want. You okay, can tell me you. I'm a stupid asshole for liking Cersei. Yeah, that's, and I will say that makes no sense. Thanks for watching our show. Yep, just with a smile. And if you like Sam and Gilly. I'm not even gonna give you the. I dignity. cannot wait. I I just hope that Sam, dude, it, specifically, like he just he ends up doing something that saves the entire show. Oh my god, I wouldn't even care at that point. He well, because where is he right now? He's in the library, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's in the library reading Point books. That's true. And it was so funny because every time he would say he would say something, it's like, "Oh, where'd you learn that, Sam? He read it in a book. What a douche." <laughs> 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 he read a bunch of books. He should be fighting with swords. It, it, it it's funny, but I just hope he does something great. I don't, but that's obviously known. I I think the mountain would probably be my one because he is just such a scumbag. Yeah, and he's another one. Well, he's that, not even a human right now. Yeah, but he's, he's I like mean, a monster I call him a scumbag. Thing. Though, so it's true. I feel like that's pretty. Yeah pretty accurate yeah. depiction he yeah. is literally just a pile of like he's dope in the sense that he's monster like an absolute monster and those guards like tried to pick a fight with him and he was <laughs> all he did was put his hand on a sword and it was like man eh, nah, i'm good and then that whole line when she says i choose violence that yeah. that was a pretty badass yeah. moment but at the same time he did rape uh Oberyn's sister oh i don't think that mountain is a good guy and then or a put good the character. hound's face into the fire. fire, but you say he's not good. Oh, but he's not a good character. How does that make any sense? He isn't. He's not really. A, I mean, he's he's a he's more of a, a an object at this point than a. I mean, he's had so little lines in this entire show. Yeah, but he's played such an important role. True, but uh, like I mean, character in the sense of like Cersei, the way that she plays yeah. her character. Okay, I don't even think she acts. I just think that 
she <sighs> is like like to her so net like that cut type of like I'm I mean kind it always of the it, queen it just looks all so natural for that, that's what I mean like I don't mean like she's like obviously running around like pulling strings right. you know yeah. but like I just mean for her like that character just fits her very very well yeah I th- I'm sure that when they were casting it they were like Lena you're Headey, done. you're done done yeah easy game over but, because your theory is is that Jamie is going to kill Cersei, right? Yeah, I think Jamie will kill Cersei. Kill Cersei. And because when you look at the last or, episode... Or let her die. Yeah. Maybe not... Not do anything to save her. her. Yeah, exactly. Like, like one of those, like, she's had, hanging off the side of the cliff and, like, he doesn't... He has a chance yeah. to, like, stick up for her. And not she's that specifically, but... Mercy, yeah. and he says, nope. Come but because again, Jamie... I don't care if Jamie dies either, so... True. Because you look at the end of season six when he saw the big pile of smoke... And that yep. necromancer or whatever his uh, is standing yeah. next to her and says, declare the king of the, mm-hmm. or queen of the seven kingdoms, all that stuff. And Jamie's like, look on yeah. his face. That's definitely a pretty big cliffhanger yeah, to say and, that. And it's him saying, like, I'm over you. Because it was always them against the world. I mean, yeah. he said that. Yep. So it'll definitely be interesting to see. And I think the mountain dies at the hands of the hound. Yeah. Because I think that's like with that whole burn in the face and them having that brother yeah. revival. I think that's how they set up that yep. whole story. I agree. So there you go. There are predictions for Game of Thrones Season 7, and obviously you will be hearing our reactions, not live, hearing our reactions like <laughs> yeah. that. Our face is just going to be like that the whole time. I was going to be talking like that. What? <laughs> so you're going to be seeing our reactions along with the Topic 2 video on Tuesday at noon Eastern time here on YouTube.com slash TJENT. Tom, what's your second topic? What's my second topic? Second sep- topic. Second topic topic second topic what is All your right. second topic second topic we can keep it light keep it light but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get some heated debates going all right because i've actually we've talked back, about this before i've gone back and forth with this though yes and, this and i have is, very compelling points for my argument yeah and i actually agree with most of them okay which is enough. okay we'll, yeah. we'll we'll start with the question as you can see if you tuned in this far all these topics get on on tangents and we just talk and discuss and yeah, other things and come up. Yeah. yeah. But, but what's your topic? Sorry. I'll stop interrupting. The question will be if you could go pro in any sport, professional athlete in any professional sport, athlete. but I'm going to put a caveat in it. Okay. You are the best in the biz. Ooh. Okay. So it's not like you're just some Joe Schmo. Yeah. Best in the biz. Okay. Head honcho. Any sport in the world, what would it be? And see, f- why? See, for my answer for this, and I don't think, I don't know. I mean, there's definitely perks that you can have with other mm-hmm. sports. Over oh, and other you ones. stay healthy. You st- I'm just going to put that in there because, eh. No, because that's kind of a big point for mine. Yeah, yeah. we're going to say not. Okay. I just meant like for your career. Right. But honestly, because then like contact sports, it's like, well, yeah. I could do that. No, well, I'll, I'll keep that out. Okay. It's just you're the best and the best. Okay. So I'll just put my answer out right away. My answer is golf. And this is the reason why. It's because... Golf is one of those great sports that, I mean, I'm trying to get more and more into now even, is that it's a sport that you can play forever. I mean, there's guys in the pro tour that are in their 60s mm-hmm. and 70s still putting up decent scores, I might add. Yeah. So not only you get to play into your 60s and 70s, and if you're good enough to be pro within this situation you right. are, you're playing in your 60s and 70s, and why I said it was one of my main points, it is probably hands down the sport that you're going to get hurt the least in. I mean, the yeah. biggest injuries that you're going to have are going to be your back. Yeah. And those usually, but, I mean, you look at Tiger with his back problems, those I, usually I, just I have wonder. happened to those guys that are really focus on their upper body strength. And they're putting so much torque on their back that really a back injury is the only one you're going to Well, get. and like, I mean, how, I, I just, I mean, you would know more because you follow golf more than I do, mm-hmm. but how many back injuries really happen? Yeah. I mean, like I said, not that often. I mean, because I, the it, only one I ever hear about is Tiger, but that's also because he's such a huge spectacle and obviously he yeah. was so freaking good yeah. that and something he, happens to him. But yeah. in all reality, like I don't hear about pros having back issues almost ever. Injuries. The ones I hear about usually, like, who was it? DJ, right before the Masters, like, fell down. Oh a yeah, fell of down stairs. his stairs, like going, like coming from his hotel room <laughs> yeah. or something like that. To and the like course. that took him out, and yeah. it's like, I mean, you had to drop out of a major for that. Yeah, that like, and that blows my mind. But, um, I mean, I just, I, I haven't really heard that many of like catastrophic injuries. No. Yeah. And and, it, and th- here's the thing with golf, you miss a major. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. Like, it sucks. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Your purse will be smaller. But if there's certain, I guess majors wouldn't be a good good example, but, like, certain opens that mm-hmm. aren't that big or certain tournaments that you just don't want to do, you don't have to do all of them. Yeah. Like, you, no, can, take, you can take time off. Yeah. And you win one. 
and you're guaranteed like two million bucks. Yeah, yeah, and, and not to mention if you place in any, like yeah. you don't even have to get first to win a decent amount oh, of money. Oh no, yeah, and, and you're s- still making over a million. I think the average me, because me and Connor looked it up one time. We the average pro Connor, friend of the show, shout yeah, out. Yeah, Connor G. Um, we looked it up, and the average salary of a pro golfer was like one point two million. Yeah, that's the nuts. average. Yeah, like that. And if you're, you're, I mean, because you're playing in probably, I mean, I don't know the, the rough numbers, but you're probably yeah. playing in upwards of like 20 tournaments a year. Yeah. Because, and, I mean, there's tournaments every weekend, but definitely right. not all the pros and are you're playing not, in every yeah, single Yeah, level. exactly. And if you look at a, like someone like in the NBA, let's say that they make $500 million if they're the best of the best over their career. Obviously, nowadays, now it's probably going to change. But $500 million like was a ton for most guys. Let's yeah. say you have a 10-year 10 10 year career. If you can stretch out the time you play for, you know, like 60 years yeah. or fi- let's let's say 50 or 40, even though you might be making less, you're also making that money for a lot longer. Yeah. So I think that plays a huge part in, OK, I'm going to play a sport. I'm going to make a shit ton of money doing it. I'm going to average at least over a mil and it's going to happen for 40 to 50 years. And another one of my points is why I would be pick golf as my number one professional sport is you get to travel the world. I mean, you're playing. You look at all these golf courses yeah, that are on the TV. Mm-hmm. That I mean, I saw Rory win a tournament in Dubai. I yeah. saw uh, what's um, I forget who won the Open Championship, but it's in Great Britain, and the courses are just like immaculate. They're beautiful. Not yep. to mention, you get to play at Augusta, which is invite only. You yeah. get to only play there. Yeah. No matter. I mean, obviously you have enough though. You can pay your way on there, but right. You can play there only by invite. That's nuts. And. You get to travel around the world, and you're—I mean—you're pretty much, especially with endorsements and sponsors and the money that that's, you're winning from tournaments, and you're that's basically getting paid to vacation to, and golf at the yeah. same time. And and like, endorsements really is where you make your money. Like the tournaments obviously are a hempty sum, but and let's be real, the cl- golf clothes are. I dope. was just gonna say they also added bonuses. Golf, you know, like you can't wear a basketball jersey around. Golf clothes. Wear that shit all the time. <laughs> Not to mention, like, I will be rocking the most outrageously dope stuff on the golf yeah. course constantly. And even if it wasn't on the golf course, like those pants and yeah. like shirts and stuff, you just call up Under Armour, Nike, whatever you're sponsored by, Titleist, and just be like, yo, just send me some shit. Like, the number one thing I would suggest is getting a visor because you put that hat on too much, not too many times. Bald. You're bald. Jordan Spieth's already bald, and he's like That's 22 nuts. years old. Honestly, I had no idea until you and Connor brought it up that you go bald from wearing a hat too much. Yep. I had no idea. I nice. rarely wear hats now. And if it's if I do, it's like lightly on so my hair is not going everywhere in the wind. Man, that's – I mean, th- I just never knew that. Bubba Watson, he always wears a visor. Yeah, it's like, yeah. you are a smart man. Or you get uh, that sponsor and you still get that visor with no – He's still. Get, oh, I mean, yeah. he still gets like the hat here yeah. and stuff, but you're not getting it bald. Yeah. I so mean, what's your answer? What's your one sport that you'd go probably? Yeah, well, all those reasons are great. Yeah. But they're wrong. Wrong. Fair enough. <laughs> Because your opinion is wrong. Your opinion is wrong. <laughs> um, no, if I, I I thought a lot about golf because golf, the idea that you can play it forever is definitely awesome. That's the biggest compelling thing. But I think if I had any choice, honestly, I'd probably go NBA. Because, and really? Yes. I thought you were going to say soccer. Yeah. And I love soccer. Yeah. It's my favorite sport to watch. I love, but I think I love playing basketball the most. Fair enough. And I think that if I could be the best of the best at anything, like to me, the most satisfying feeling would just be like taking off from the free throw line, <laughs> just like air Jordan. Being and, able to dunk easily like, as they do would like, be one of the sweetest feelings ever. Like coming like, from yeah. us. I mean, I'm six one, so I'm I'm tall. I dunked er. once in my life in high school. Yeah, and that was it. And that was like. I tipped it in yeah, and like exactly. barely got it in. I was, was able it. to dunk in high school, but it was never really like these slams Slam that you see. Yeah. And it's just like these guys are looking down yeah. at the rim. And it's it, like they catch the ball and so they just boop. Yeah. In. Not, not to mention dunk. they can like bear they don't even have to jump as high like as hard as they can. They can do like three sixty between like dunks and stuff. And it's yeah. just they make it look so easy. That would be dope. Awesome. And even like doing things like Steph does where he shoots from, you know, like outside of the Oracle. Yeah. And it makes like seventy it. in a row. And like just like, I mean, I'm not like a huge flashy showboaty talker, but man, just like posterizing breaking someone. someone's ankles, <laughs> doing like a Kyrie and yeah. have someone spin around like a top. Oh, or LeBron, because I hate LeBron. Like you're telling me I have a chance to just sink one in his face and then just slam it on him. Oh, I mean, like to me that feeling would be awesome. And now that we see the contracts that the NBA gets, no, sh- because or- as we talk. 
There was a contract <laughs> extension achieved by one James Harden of the Houston Rockets and for four years, two hundred and twenty eight. I'm gonna actually I'm just gonna I'm gonna do, do something. Do the exact math on yeah, that. I wanna know because while he does that, two hundred and twenty eight million dollar contract extension and remind you, and this is why he's doing the math, it's over four years. So Tom, how much is he making a year? That is fifty seven million dollars. Fifty seven million. A million year. dollars. And, and I'm sure you've seen James Harden and his beard of Foot Locker commercials, mm-hmm. Adidas commercials. Yeah. I so, think his Adidas deal was $100 million. Yeah. So he's getting 57 a year just from the Rockets. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 100 Just to play basketball. And ah, it might have been more than that. Now I think about. I think it might be like Because Steph Curry achieved a five-year $201 million I was, I was dollar say, deal. Steph Curry last week set the record. Last and week. And I almost <laughs> my pants yeah. because it was five years for 201 And I'm like, yo, that cat is making $40 million a year. And James Harden gets more is money, making seventeen million more, more in less years than Steph Curry. That's almost like a hundred and fifty percent of what Steph is making, and then he's making it in four years. And what we were saying was, because to me, I'm not a big believer in James Harden. I think he's a great player, but he's such a liability on defense, and I think his game is so f- like. He, to me, is the epitome of why people hate the M- NBA because he just goes in, does a stupid flop. And the well, thing, no try shoots. on defense and then all try on offense. I mean, that's well, but much. like he doesn't. Even, but my point is he doesn't even try on offense because he just gets fouled yeah. and then takes his 20 free throws a game. Yeah, 20 like, free throws a him game. and Russ lead the league in free throws every single f-ing year because yeah. they flop all the time. And I'm like, this is why people don't want to watch because. Well, then if you're a professional NBA player like you want to be, then you're going to have to flop. I'm not. No, no. <laughs> Caveat, I'm the best in the biz. Caveat, I'm the best in the biz, and I don't, I don't flop, flop a single thing. Nope. Second. No LeBron flops, no James. Because, yeah. I mean, people flop to a certain extent. Because I understand, like, there is a part of the game where you have to sell calls that yeah. someone might not be able to hear. I mean, you're huge, right? Yeah. Things are going to hit you, and you're like, it's going to look like it's nothing, but yeah. you actually took a shot. Yeah. I get that. But when it's every play, you get, like, someone plays good defense on you, and you're, oh, my yeah. God, my yeah. arms are going, like, 360, I'm on the ground. Flowing your body. Or yeah. getting out of the way of a dunk every single defensive possession. Yeah. So I don't think James Harden is that great of a player. But my point was, for four years, he's still going to be in his prime. Yeah, like he's not an old dude. Yeah, he'll he'll still be good in four years. Yeah, and, and that, I mean that's and that's this a was, huge plus. This was his first year as a point guard on the Rockets. Yeah, and he gets a four year extension. That's the biggest in NBA history by a I, lot. I think that that's a little bit steep, but. I like I I get it, but I would ne- like if I was an owner, I would tell him to get f- if he yeah. thought I was about to pay that. Yeah, yeah. If he like came at you with those contract yeah, numbers, exactly. Yeah, and that's good support for your argument with basketball being as like the one professional sport that you, if you could choose to be the best in, because not only and that's the benefit right yeah. of playing a sport in the United States, because the branding of that. Yeah of you as a player can be significantly increased. Yeah. And another thing, why basketball in particular, which only I think is really in common with soccer mm-hmm. on the global stage, because everywhere plays basketball. Yeah. It might not be the biggest sport. Yeah. And it's not the biggest, it's not even the biggest sport here. I mean, NFL is. And yeah. If, I mean, for all intents and purposes, the NFL will probably be the biggest sport in America mm-hmm. for as long as it's relevant. Right. Um, but, and that's another support of your argument because if you can be the best in the biz, if mm-hmm. you can be the best player in that sport, then you're going to be an image around the world. Right. Jordan is an image around the world. Right. LeBron is an image around the world. Steph is probably one of the top ambassadors yeah. for the NBA around the world. Mm-hmm. These guys are getting popular around the world, so they're you probably they're probably not going to get many endorsement deals from foreign countries. I don't even know if they're allowed. To, are they even allowed to do that? that I'd assume. Easy? Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't see why that would be a problem or anything. Because uh, I mean, you ever I, seen? Really you ever know. seen like an American athlete advertising for something? In Actually, no. Country? I take that back. I definitely have. I mean, because you've been over there. Yeah. I, no, did you ever see any was, like, American say, athletes? I uh, I've watched a couple commercials with retired athletes, though. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen one with, with active, a current athlete. But I can't see. Imagine why they wouldn't. I just don't think that they would promote a product that like they don't use. Yeah. Like well, not use, but like. They aren't adamantly in the like. If they're in the U.S., they're going to promote U.S. products. If yeah. they're in Germany, they'll like do like a news station and be like, yeah. "Oh, check out this German blah blah blah." Yeah, but yeah, I don't. I've I've definitely seen retired athletes do it though. 
For Either sure. way, you're going to have, I mean, jersey sales, I mean, jerseys are being sold everywhere. So yep. if you're a global player, yep. then your jersey sales are going to be through the roof. And, and that's another thing that NBA has over golf or any sport, really, mm-hmm. that you have a jersey related. Because although they're wearing dope clothes on the golf course, you can't. you're not making money off those clothes if right. people buy them. Right. But and players get money off of their jersey sales. Also, the especially with the NFL and the NBA, there's a lot of metrics that go into, you know, why do people cater to NBA players more than mm-hmm. NFL players? They don't have a helmet. Facial yeah. recognition, you're always on TV, that camera's always here, and they know what your face looks like. And that doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it's actually huge. And I remember back in the day, in like 2001, when Miami was a super team, basically an NFL combine mm-hmm. the one like when when they broke when basically every celebration rule was created was because of the u and there was a dude who took off his helmet and they asked him why he took off his helmet he goes oh all the ba- all the girls see all these basketball players and want them <laughs> to see my face and i mean that's hilarious it's true but in all reality like you go around a campus or around just fans in general and you show them pictures of certain nfl players and they probably won't care yeah but nba players now they know only, a number not only do they know what they look like but there's only five dudes on that team at one time on the court and probably only like two, three superstars. So you're going to know who they are. Yeah. Like, yeah, you might not know every bench player, but the guys who are starting playing 35 minutes a game. Not to mention if you knows. have something that's like a part of your image, like yeah. Harden with his beard. Or Steph chewing on his mouth guard. Yeah. Like, I mean, you have, I mean, LeBron, I mean, I guess. LeBron flopping Le- everywhere. LeBron in his hairline. LeBron choking in the. <laughs> <laughs> choking in four finals or whatever he had. No. But LeBron's I mean, really that's, good. you LeBron's definitely really good. I'll give him yeah. credit. I don't yeah. like him, but yeah, I like LeBron. Tom doesn't. That, yeah. that might come up later. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you make definitely some compelling arguments in terms of the advantage that NBA would have. Yeah. Because I thought you were going to say soccer. Yeah. But it's it's definitely interesting. Well, I don't know to think why about. I didn't say soccer though. Why? Season's too long. Season's too long. Yep. NBA, I think, is a decent balance because you get the Olympics, so you can play mm-hmm. the Olympics every four years. But start in November. And in June at the latest. Lengthy season, but doable. Soccer, dude, they never stop. Especially if you're in a league other than the Bundesliga, where because they obviously had that winter break. Bundesliga dude, is soccer league in Germany. Yes. But like the Premier League, they don't do that. Yeah. And I Liga doesn't do that. Yeah. And right now all those dudes are playing. Well, with your choice as NBA as your professional sport, do you worry about injuries at all? No. Because I mean you look at I mean, look at the dudes like... So if you're saying you're going to be the best in the biz, yeah, then it means that your team's probably going to go very far, yes. which means that you're going to be getting a lot of playing time. And you no, look no, at... That's what I was saying, November to June. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. you look at LeBron. I mean, he's... I mean, LeBron and Mamba, he's in, Kobe Bryant. I would He's make, had... They've had so many games played in the playoffs. Like, it's almost... What was Kobe's, like, three extra seasons or something? Yeah, LeBron's like almost there yeah. already. Yeah. And, like, way before Kobe because he started when, you right. know... Well, well, Co- well, you know, Kobe came out of high school too. Yeah, he came out of high school too. Kobe but, played seventeen um, seasons. Nuts, yeah, dude. but LeBron, I think the caveat was he's been to more, like he's been farther in the playoffs. Somebody, like, yeah. I don't know. Either yeah. way, it's a load of basketball, and that's a load of work on your legs. Yes, because the thing with golf is that, and that's why I mean, and I don't think I'd be interesting to see if you can, if you choose football as your pr- professional sport and you want to make that your argument, please let us know in the comments because I would really like to hear the points behind that because one giant point of like devil's health. advocate that I would say, yeah, is health. Yeah. Because unless you're a kicker or a quarterback... There's no guarantee. No. Well, I mean, even, even a quarterback. Even quarterback I mean, because you can get blindsided. Look at like yeah. Brady when he went down with his knee injury, Peyton with his neck injury. Yeah, he tore his ACL, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's like... That's or uh, Aaron Rodgers, he broke his clavicle. Yeah. Like what, three years ago? Oh, that's right. And when he got slammed on his shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it's, yeah. and it's like, especially now... The game is only going to get more violent, and it's only I going mean, to get. We're getting better athletes. Yeah, and that's and what's they're crazy. Coming at you, like faster, stronger. Yeah. And the pads are almost a weapon at this point. Yeah. Like they just make it so. Okay, I'm not going to break my shoulder if I lay it into your face mask. Yeah. Because guess what? They can throw a flag, but if you tear your ACL, you tear your ACL. Yeah. And that's no going to affect you for the rest of your life. Yeah. I mean, I think with any professional sport, injuries will always be caveat i guess yeah. maybe like a exception but i have seen some ex nba players they're pretty slow moving yeah oh yeah i mean, I mean your knees <laughs> like, yeah it's it's all that much time because i mean you get sore knees after like jogging on cement yeah. let alone like i just, just working your ass off on a gym floor for this i just feel like the second i'm on my lazy boy 
and I'm like, oh, God, my legs just hurt all the time. I just pan over to the right. And see, see my, all your millions of would, dollars. And I would look over there and be like. Mm. I'm going to go dive over there like Scrooge McDuck <laughs> and swan dive that, into my is, dollars. Does that look like $800 million to you? Yeah. <laughs> my legs. You see, I, I saw a graphic right before we started recording that James Harden over his four-year contract will make more than LeBron has over his career yeah. in the NBA so yeah. far. Because, I mean, people are getting in at the right time, I guess.